Hello and welcome. While the year 2020 has been an extremely arduous and challenging time for us all, it feels a little bit like we're all on a continuous and repetitive emotional roller coaster. And throughout this, as we all know too well, families are undergoing considerable stress during this pandemic. Now, if COVID-19 is slowly doing your head in and pandemic parenting is wearing you down, well, you're definitely not alone. So today we are going to share a scientifically proven de-stressing relief technique that uses Eastern acupressure meridian points with Western psychology. <laughs> you know, you're probably going, what, Rach? <laughs> but just stick with us. <laughs> and this is with the aim to provide you with relief and relaxation during this really stressful time. So to help speak to us about this, we welcome our special guest, Faye Chan, a clarity and mindset coach. Now, Faye is going to show us how we can unpack and peel off the extra layers of heavy emotions that we're all carrying on our shoulders at the moment and also share her self-care mindset tips for exhausted parents during and post lockdown. Thanks for joining us, Faye. How are you? I'm really well. Thanks for having me, Rach. Yeah, and I'm really excited for this talk. Um, and no matter what, um, I think everyone is, has had or encountered cha a challenge or multiple challenges throughout this COVID-19 mm. <laughs> um, sort of yeah. lockdown period that we've sort of been in. And I guess despite that we've each had our buttons pushed to the limit this year, um, we're all trying to do our very best to stay on top of things and just to stay positive. But, you know, we all, mm. as I said earlier, we, we know all too well that family stress levels are high, particularly in women with children. Um, and it seems, however, that you know, when we're going through a rough time and we don't work through these big emotions, there can be some longer term problems, um, in particular when we suppress our feelings and push them back to our subconscious minds. So initially, I'd love to know why do you think it is so important that during this difficult time that we learn to find a way to honour our feelings and just to work through them? I think it's really, really important for the aspect of self-care. And I know that word's used, you know, from here to the yin-yang throughout the whole COVID <laughs> situation, right? <laughs> but yeah, but, um, but really it's about um, acknowledging and giving yourself some compassion for what you're dealing with. Because yes, it very is important. extraordinary times. And, um, and everyone collectively is going through it at the same time, which is very unusual, right? It's, it's not like you can lean on your friends or lean on your partner because everyone is in the same boat. It's That's really, really important to really acknowledge ourselves. That's really, that's a fascinating way to look at it because generally when people are going through a difficult time, it can be unbalanced that one person's in a great place and, and has wonderful things happening and wonderful experiences. And on the other hand, the other friend is actually going through a real you know, struggle, but collectively mm. everyone is going through, you know, a really challenging time at the same point in time. That's, that's, it's, it's an inter interesting yeah. way to think of it. Yeah. But, um, you know, so, so this, I mean, I guess what we're trying to do at the moment is, is trying to, I guess, deal with some um, big emotions and to stop us from reacting to those situations and um, stop us from flying off the handle. So I'd love to ask from your opinion, you know, what do you see as being the biggest difference between the mindset of families um, that you're, you've been working with between the first wave of COVID and now during the second wave? Um, there's not. I don't think there's a significant difference between the two because it's almost like you, you, you're skipping from the, what's that saying? Pot to the hot pan or whatever it is, the frying pan to the kettle, right? Yep. And so it's not much different. It's not that significant. And um, the coping strategies, because if you want to use more logistical you know, strategies, people are much more... Um, more strategic in the second time round than they are in the first time round. They can really refine and build on the strategies from, from the first time round, such as, you know, remote learning, um, how teachers and schools are doing their videos and instructional teaching. They've refined it, right? But if you haven't really addressed, um, so that's in the doing, right? But what drives the doing is always the emotion, right? So if you haven't addressed the emotional pipeline, that might actually be building up. And so what I found with a lot of different families that I've worked with is that it's a lot more exacerbated now than it was for the first, the first wave or first lockdown mm. because you've actually been able to then 
this, you know, after the first wave, there was a real sense of normality that could return. There was a real sense of hope, wasn't there? And then, you know, as we trickle back into life, you know, you're like, oh, great. You know, we're back to returning, having visitors and going out to cafes and restaurants and playgrounds were actually open. <laughs> um, and then all of a sudden that's taken away from you. So, mm -hmm. you know, the, the angst and the emotion and the overwhelm of the hope being dashed out of your system as such, you know, really will bring up other triggers and other things that you're not aware might, that may be laying low. You know? Yes. And I think with the first wave, there was a sense of uh, novelty around it, although that it wasn't necessarily one that yeah. we had chosen, but there was a novelty. It was something different. It was new. It was, and we're like, okay, great. Yeah. This is going to be over by sort of June, July yeah. and by September, August or wherever, yeah. we're going to be back to normal. Yeah. Life's going to go. However, the yeah. second wave, I've found there's like a, a different feeling of heaviness to it and, and it's really set in. Okay. Uh, and that's yeah. just from, you know, the families that we speak to and, and just a, a general sort of observation overall. But, you know, there's a, there has mm. been a whole range of different feelings to the cycle of thoughts that parents have been experience, experiencing both in the first mm. and second wave, being from frustration, anger, yeah. overwhelm, exhaustion, um, guilt, of course, if you're feeling guilty towards your kids in the sense that maybe if you yelled at them and or just been frustrated um, with them as well. You mm -hmm. know? So you know, I'd yeah. love to know from your perspective, how can parents stop themselves from feeling like at the moment they may be potentially um, sort of spir spiraling into a bit of a, a rabbit hole? yeah well <laughs> i've been there done that myself and you need to be able to break that pattern and intercept it right okay and it's very hard it's very hard to do so when you're in it it's like trying to tell an irrational person to calm down like it just doesn't work right? yeah. like, calm down no <laughs> so but it's really about seeing the signs and seeing the build-up and managing that so what I personally do is um, I listen to a lot of music. I love to move and dance around. I do my EFT tapping consistently. And even if I'm out, you know, hanging the clothes out on the clothesline and I'm feeling a bit anxious, I'll keep tapping to manage my emotions. Right? Yes. Um, and then there's always other strategies that everybody else has adopted, but you need to do what works for you. Right. Everybody's going to be different. Um, and so it's, you know, matter of people might like journaling, they might like yoga, they might go out for a walk, um, you know, connect with people, unfortunately online. Um, but you need to see what works for you. And as, and if you don't let the valve, the pressure valve off, um, gradually, then that's when you experience yourself blowing. Yeah. Right? So, and so it's real, yeah. And I mean, definitely, definitely isolation 2.0 does feel different this particular time around, despite, of course, the number of cases being higher than the, the, the now first yeah. round of, of, of COVID isolation. Um, and potentially families maybe are dealing with the same issues 2.0 than, than they were in the first wave that they possibly haven't addressed mm. any of those problems. So may, possibly they're just mm. reliving those same problems um, that they haven't maybe potentially worked through. Um, so this is something that I want to be able to discuss in a little bit more detail, how we can actually work through those. Um, but before we sort of get sure. into more detail, just wanted to quickly ask, you know, we published your article titled The Mindset Challenge. Um, so for someone who hasn't read the article, please tell us just briefly what it's about and what inspired you to write it. And then we can get into to all of the good stuff. <laughs> okay. So the article is really um, a place where you can read and go through what I do with clients in terms of their mindset, right? Because everybody's going to be different. Of course. And I do touch on emotional freedom technique and I'm an EFT practitioner. However, that, you know, I didn't want to write the whole process of how to do it without people really understanding the art and the modality of emotional freedom technique, right? And I'm just tapping right now at those particular points, right? Um, but I do go through the fundamentals of what emotional freedom technique is about so that they can use the concepts to really help themselves. Mm. And that starts with acceptance and then acknowledgement and then last but not least, the affirmation, yeah, well, where you can create new possibilities. Well, let's get into all of it. So you help 
working and homeschooling parents work through their emotional stresses. And you do this by providing them with strategies to help find calm, clarity and confidence amid the chaos of life at the moment with one-on-one coaching and EFT tapping, which you've mentioned um, a couple of mm-hmm. times now. So we'd love to know what are the f- fundamentals of EFT and how can it provide um, parents with relief and relaxation just during this stressful time then? Well, it's really all about relationships, right? So a parent might be frustrated at their um, child who might be special needs at learning something, right? They're at home, the other kids are home, partner's at home, they're going to do everything else and school the child and the child's resisting, right? Yes. You just imagine. And so what I, when I work with parents, it's not about fixing the child. It's far from that. There's nothing wrong with the child, right? And when I work with parents, it's really about their relationship to the child that's been triggered by something in their past that's incomplete. Okay. Right? So what I mean by that is, you know, if if your child's being really angsty and not resisting schooling, resisting remote learning, just wants to be on a PlayStation, whatever else, um, that might really trigger you over time right? And your request might be ignored. Um, They're not picking up their clothes to put in the laundry basket. And you've done that 10 times and you just lose the plot. And that's normal. Firstly, it's not, it's not to um, make yourself wrong for that, right? It's okay to lose your plot. (laughs) And then, and then inside of understanding that it's, you know, I look at their relationship to the child and what's been triggered mm-hmm. because when you alleviate that, then it yeah. doesn't matter what the child does or doesn't do, you're not going to react to it the same way. So if the child triggers you 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10 meaning I'm going to, I'm going to blow at him if I don't remove myself and just, and just stay in the bedroom for 10 minutes, I'm going to lose my mind, right? That's <laughs> 10 out of 10 reaction. But yep. then if you see your relationship with them and work out something about the relationship as to why you're being triggered and I use, I use EFT tapping for do, to do that. Then when your child does the same thing again, if your trigger or the reaction that, that um, comes up within you is a three out of 10 rather than a 10 out of 10, then you, you'll be able to catch the reaction and you'll have the awareness to catch the reaction and not be overtaken by the reaction so you have the reaction it's not the reaction has you that's really you get the power in balance yes right so the power gets restored back to you being yourself has nothing to do with you being a parent has nothing with to you to nothing to do with the child but it's all to do with your relationship with yourself and how the triggers um, come up and how you react to it okay and if you're not charged so much that you're overtaken by the reaction, then you can manage your reaction and move on. So EFT is more than just a de-stressing relief technique then, which is what I thought it was originally. So is, is it actually scientifically proven technique? Yes, definitely. It's scientifically proven as a de-stressing, calming technique that, re- that bypasses the fight or flight, right? And it's not, it doesn't happen in the thinking brain. It really taps into your subconscious. Mm -hmm. So how I explain it is um, imagine like everybody knows what a computer looks like. They've got a computer on their phone, right? And everybody knows what malware is, like a virus. Not the COVID, but computer (laughs) virus. And just imagine you're you're going through life, you know, um, you're six years old and um and mum's really angry with you and you're and you're just having fun twirling your fun dress but you you unbeknownst to you did something wrong and mum got really angry with you right. and in that moment you collapse i'm not good enough to your relationship with mum mm-hmm. right yes and so from then on that script runs your brain like to measure up to any female authority around you you must always do better otherwise you're not good enough you don't measure up yes. and you're forever trying to fulfill that script that now that computer is running because the malware has been installed 
and all of a sudden you're running that script. Mm -hmm. And so you go through life having grown up, being, you know, a woman, got married, kids, and you're wondering how come the same sort of situation turns up in your life again and again and again, even though you might live in a different country, have a different boss, have different partners. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so what EFT does is it literally unplugs and uninstalls the malware, right? The uninstallation, mm -hmm. right? So if you uninstall that, then what's possible? Everything. Correct. And you don't even know what's possible, right? Yes. But the scary thing is, the, the confront is you got to, then you got to know that you need to confront your normality and your truth. Yeah. You gotta right. Do and go, yeah. if that is, yeah, if that isn't me and that's always been me for the last three, four decades, right. Then what is me? So what I'm, what I'm hearing is, is, is it's, us sort of looking at our life and what, what are the repetitive patterns that we've had in our lives and asking the question, why does this always yeah. happen to me? Or why does this always, this mm. type of partner present in my life or these type of friends yeah. present in my life, um, which mm -hmm. potentially may be a negative influence on your life, may be toxic, may be a bad situation. Yep. Um, and, and it's about having to do the personal work and sort of unraveling and peeling off those layers, like you said, to say, where did this Correct. come from? Yeah. Why did this happen to me? Um, and, and then mm. sort of breaking that cycle and then resetting, starting with a blank canvas with a paintbrush in your hand and saying, I can pretty much now create and paint my exactly life. Monday. Yeah. Uh -huh. I love it. So this is also known as tapping because you use the fingertips on, um, to tap the meridian points, um, sort of in different parts of your body. So, I mean, how have you found that EFT works to alleviate stress and anxiety then? Well, um, acupuncture way back in ancient China was mm -hmm. used to alleviate physical ailments right? And mm -hmm. they, they'll put needles, it's needlework, right? Love but it. we use the fingers to pulse on the meridian points and that's why it's called tapping, mm -hmm. right? And um, so it works the same way to alleviate and de-stress and relax you. Because if anyone's been to an acupuncture appointment before, yep. you've got pain, the needles go in, it alleviates and it de-stresses, it moves the energy or the chi that they work with, right? Yes and you're back in balance and back in flow, mm -hmm. right? And then what happens with EFT is we use the language using Western psychology to trigger, right? Because we might, we might say this is a blue pen and we can point to a blue pen. It is a blue right? pen. Right? But how do, how do you point to frustration and how do you point to anger? But if I say, think about the last time you fought with your partner or think about some bill that you wanted to pay but you couldn't pay you're really frustrated at yourself and you're really angry at yourself i'll go where's the sensation right now in your body and you go oh, i feel it in my solar plexus so i feel it in my chest or my jaws tensing or i feel it in my neck i feel my shoulders and you'll you'll feel the pain or, or someone will be like oh there's some stabby pain in my ribs i don't know why right so your body will physically manifest the feelings and emotions like they like, but because we can't manifest pen or manifest frustration, right? But our body holds it, it, it in, it manifests in different parts correct. of the body. So EFT uses, um, as you said, Eastern acupressure meridian points with Western psychology, and it works to rewire the brain by sending calming and de-stressing signals to the part of our brain. Mm -hmm. And it's the temporal lobe, isn't it, that in, involved in emotions of fear and aggression. So this allows both the body and the brain to release the limitations of negative experiences, emotions correct. and thoughts, and which yeah. holds us back from creating the life that we really want. Is that right? Yeah, and it's next to the hippocampus where all your memories are stored, right? And so that's why when you're tapping, um, you might remember a memory or a thought or even a picture that might not make sense from your past, right? But it's almost like your subconscious giving you clues, like, you know, the breadcrumbs to Hansel and Gretel. Oh, I use that analogy all the time. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. <laughs> so, I mean, what type of uh, yeah. changes and transformations would a parent experience um, 
from EFT and doing this, let's say home in isolation, we've got everything going on at the moment, mm. depending what state and territory mm. you're in, no one would want to choose to be mm-hmm. in Victoria at the moment. But if you are, Hey, we, we can't change it. We can't even get out of the state really. Let's face it. So, um, <laughs> so what transformation oh, and changes would a parent experience um, if they were to start um, sort of using EFT? Then. Okay, so if they were to use EFT, what I always work with the parent first before working with the child, always, right? Because it's really about their relationship to themselves, and if they transform that, their environment will literally change. Love right? it. And so when you when you're tapping um, with a parent, it's usually about their anxiety, their overwhelm, their anger, and their frustration. Mm-hmm. And I'll see what comes up because of that, mm-hmm. and they'll and they'll. Um, the awareness is really quite beautiful to witness because they'll go, oh, I'm reacting this way to my son because of how my dad was and how I needed to do, be with him. And that's why I needed my son to be that with me. Mm-hmm. And so as soon as they catch it and they're no longer that anymore because they're no longer driven by that need to satisfy their dad way yes. back when, then all of a sudden the relationship with their children changes because their reaction will change as well yes right quite powerful so, um i've been tapping yeah i've been tapping with a client with her anxiety just general anxiety and what she's noticed is that her husband has shown up more romantic he nice. i've been tapped with him he's done nothing different but, but it's, because it's a blockage he's for actually her. Her, anxi- her anxiety level has gone down she's a lot more relaxed to be around they're, a lot, they're communicating a lot more. He's experiencing a different her, even though he hasn't changed himself. He, she has come to me to go, I can't believe the birthday gift he got. Like, I've never, it's so expensive. I've never had that from him. And they've been married for, you know, with, for ages with two kids. Mm. So things alter in your world because your context has altered because yes. you're no longer triggered and you're no longer reacting and being the same way. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I, th- I think COVID has really been a, um, a period of time that we've been living through that has allowed a lot of us to, to reevaluate our personal beliefs and our values. Um, and as we were mm. saying before, to be able to create a new sense of reality, sort of realizing what didn't serve our purpose leading up to this period Mm -hmm. of time um, and how we can actually better ourselves just for ourselves, not for anyone else, but just for ourselves moving forward. So it's um, a little bit like now it's a little (laughs) like we've been sent to our rooms. We've been sent to our homes that we can't really leave and have a good think about it. And this is a really great opportunity EFT to be able to work through some of these subconscious blockages that we may have had since our childhood that we don't know to, to, to break these sort of these yeah. patterns we've had in our life to be able to create yeah. a, a better reality. And I forward. think, yeah, because pre COVID or even in between COVID, I mean, lockdown one and two, we've had the smoke screen of busyness. Do you yep. know what I mean? Like we can cover it up. Yeah, it's the pile under the car. Everyone's busy. We're busy. And I'm busy. I'm tired. I'm busy, which is yeah. the truth. And, but you can, yes. and that's the smoke screen to not deal with it because you can always remain busy, always do a new course, always do something else, always go on a new holiday, da, 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 new house, new everything. Yep. And the busyness hides what's really not dealt with and hides the unworkable patterns. But now you're, you're forced to be with it. And to sit with it. Right. It's very uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Extremely. You're like just immersed in mud. Yes. And you're like, oh, I run away from it. It's heavy and you want correct. Yeah. 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 It, it is a great opportunity to be able to work through it because heaven knows if we'll ever have this again in our lives. Who knows? But, you know. <sighs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now I'd love to read out a paragraph from the article, which I think summarizes all of this very well. So this is quoting you when you do the work and unpacking and delay, delaying how you feel the facts peel away from the meanings and you're left with a matter at hand with no drama or direction by un- un- uncontrollable thoughts. It's truly freeing. Can you maybe just expand a little bit more on this? Um, Oh, I was just reading it. 
Um, it's just the sense of, uh, by the looks of things, of, of actually freeing ourselves um, from all of the restraints that we've had in our lives previously and then to be able to sort of free ourselves from any um, heavy baggage that maybe we've been carrying. Um, and maybe in mm. particular, would you think that COVID may be adding to, to the layers of, 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 of stress and, and everything else we've had at the moment too? So this is even more so a time not to be clearing things from the past in our lives, but to be working through what we've, we've been adding on in the last few months, do you think as well? I don't know. Yeah, well, that's, uh, I mean, this is, I'm going to, can I use that pizza analogy now? Yes. <laughs> it's, al- it's almost like COVID, I mean, 2020, really, from the bushfires and um, the riots and what have you. It's, <laughs> yeah, everything. It handed us a pizza on a plate that's got banana, sardines, it's laced with pineapple, it's got chocolate sauce on it, <laughs> and, and it's going, eat this. And you're going, no. I love like, it. Yuck, it's not on the menu. It's not on my menu. I would I didn't never choose, choose that. <laughs> no. And the thing is, it's served up to everybody all at the same time. And they're like, there's no other pizza. You're really hungry and this is it. And you have to eat it. But I didn't want this. It's not on my menu. I didn't choose it. I, I don't want to eat it, but you have to eat it because this is all you've got. Yeah. This is what's in front exactly. of you, so deal with but it. But the joke <laughs> is, but the joke is, life has always been like that. Yes. And we think we've got a choice, right? So life has always, like, you know, you might be handed, I don't know, a, a, a fine by the police or um, someone, your washing machine broke down. You know, or um, your grandparents might be deceased or have cancer and get to deal with illnesses in your family. Right? There's always like something. Emergencies like that. Uh, c- correct. And you didn't. You go, oh, no, I'm not going to choose that cancer. I'd rather choose arthritis. Like, you just, you just don't <laughs> do that, right? And so, but it, it's, it's not as exacerbated because not everybody's going through the same choices. Mm-hmm. Now we've been handed the same pizza. It's on top of what we haven't already dealt with. Ouch. Yeah. And, well and so the familiar patterns, if the familiar patterns that you're not, that you be able to numb over is now coming up to surface. And on top of that, the COVID even lockdown too, it's like, this is the only pizza you're ever going to get. Right? Could you imagine all your triggers and all the incompletions meeting up with the pizza? Right? It's going to blow. Yes. So this is exactly what's happening. And I'm finding that the general energy as since, well, in Metropolitan Melbourne, since masks were mandatory, mm-hmm. um, the general energy has been a lot more aggressive, a lot more justified and a lot more righteous. And it doesn't matter which spectrum of agreement or disagreement you are regarding what's happening, what's not happening, facts or no facts, right? Um, but the general energy is very aggressive. Yes. And so if you're, immer- you're dealing with yourself immersed in that, right, it's, it's going to be a really disaster. yucky soup. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but, you know, I think during this time, the biggest thing is it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to say that you're not okay and you're not feeling okay. That's, yeah. that's normal and there's no shame in yeah. doing that whatsoever. No. So in, in saying this, no. you know, what happens if someone's like, okay, great, I want to work through these, emo- these emotions, but these negative, negative thoughts are louder than my m- mindset. I mean, how can people overcome this and where do they start then? Um. When I do, when clients speak to me in between the sessions and they're not with me and I'm not tapping specifically with them, customising the session to them, I'll say just stand in front of the mirror and tap and vent because it's about allowing the emotions out. It's not about suppressing it, right, which we okay, all try like to do. This. It's like a volcano. It. Just let it just right? sort of erupt and sort of just come out then. Yeah. Exactly. Even if you were to stand in front of a mirror and you just do what we call the karate chop point, right? Or even just tap on top of your head and just vent and go, I can't believe he's done that. Just get, I'm so angry. I'm so frustrated. I could punch the mirror right now. Yada, yada, yada. And just let it all out. And eventually, while you're tapping, you're tapping, while you're doing the tapping point. Points. Yeah. Yeah. Whilst you're doing that, um, it alleviates you. 
and you'll get to a point where you can't vent anymore or the venting sounds really silly. And it's like at that point, it's, it's left your body type of thing. Is that right? Correct. So instead of it being 10 out of 10, it's two out of 10. And so instead of blowing up at your kids, if you manage it down to two out of 10, you can go back out and still manage the situation okay, without great. them experiencing your angst and then losing it as well. So how, in, okay, that, this is awesome. So if, if, I mean, and this would be great, even if like we were saying, the negative thoughts are louder than our mindset. This is even so, mm. this is a really great way of if someone's starting tapping maybe, and I'm going to start doing this too. So where do we start? How do we know what uh, EFT tapping meridian points that we start with? Um, okay. Yeah, how do we start with this? Do you want me to show you? Well, yeah, I mean, this is going to be a podcast also. So if you could talk through this, um, for the people that are watching uh, via video, that's great. They'll be able to visually see you, of course. But if, for everyone listening, can you just talk through this at the same time? Okay, sure. So there's an algorithm of points through the whole body, mm -hmm. um, which the founder of EFT discovered and, and is used, right? So EFT, Emotional Freedom Technique, as we use it, uses this particular algorithm of points. So we start with what we call the karate chop point, right? So imagine if you're chopping a piece of wood with your hand, there's the soft part of your hand that's underneath your pinky finger. The fatty bit. So we tap on oh, that. the fatty bits everywhere. Yeah, but anyway, the fatty bit. <laughs> that's a fatty bit on my hand. So use the tip of your fingers. To your, yeah. So we always start there, yep. right? Okay. And I'm not going to go through the whole script there's always the speaking part to it, but I'm not going to do that here because of people listening. And So can um, I ask a question? Does it matter, yeah. like with the chi in your body, if you're sort of tapping, if you're right-handed, do you need to tap your right or it doesn't matter? You tap both hands? No, both it doesn't matter body? whether you're right or left. Okay. You're symmetrical on both sides. Okay. Yeah. So for everyone watching at the moment, we're tapping with our hand, with our fingers on our opposite hand, the fatty bit, um, which sits underneath our pinky finger. Um, and how long do you tap yeah. for then? Um, well, there's always, there's a script that goes with it, but I won't do it here. But if you're doing the venting, let's just say, you can just go about six or seven times. Okay. Or however long you need to, to just get the vent out, right? Okay. So this could be hours. <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah, venting we in front of the, the mirror and for then, hours. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes you don't, you don't have to remember all the points that I'm going to show you. Okay. You can just remember one or, or go to one that works for you most. Okay. So we've got the hands. Okay. Where else? Top of, top of your head. So pretty much where your crown is. Yep. And, and point. an open sort of, um, but all, your fingers yep. being flat. Yep. Yeah. Just, just where your fingertips. Yep. Okay. And great. then the eyebrow point. So literally your, where your eyebrow meets your forehead. Okay. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if it's your left or right eyebrow. Okay. Yeah. Great. And then, the, and then we go to the side of eye, yep. literally on the side of your eye. Mm -hmm. And then under eye, so on the soft part of your eye where your pupils are. Yeah. And then under your nose is the next point. What's there? That's inter it's an interesting point. Right yeah, under your that's nose. A, it's called the right under your nose. The next point. Yeah. Well, the next point is the clarity point, right? So we're... Where, you, where that crease is in your chin. Yep. And if I ask my little boy what well, six plus nineteen, he'll go hmm. He'll naturally, intuitively go there. Yes. Right. Because we think that's, that's we a think. clarity point. Yeah. Isn't that interesting. Because yep. we all go there. Of course. Right? Naturally. So we yeah. tap on those points and then the next sort of point. six times or so. You're saying? Yeah, six or seven times, or whatever you want to say. You can go. I'm so frustrated right now. I'm really angry at my son because, you know, I've asked him 10 times and I feel so ignored. Okay, great. Right? Yep. And you just tap through the points whilst you're saying all those things. Okay, great. Which, so the next which is the volcano we're the talking about. Point. Yep. Yeah. So the, vol the volcano point. So <laughs> the collarbone point. Yes. So you're lovely bits up. But yep. you go down towards the armpit about five centimetres and there's sure. a depression there. So collarbone sort of about... Yeah. Okay, great. About there. All right, so which yeah. is the, the very top so of the tutorials then. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yep. And then the next point is your underarm point. It's 10 centimetres under your underarm. 
So females, go for your bra strap and you'll be fine. That's another fatty point for me. Yep. Finding fatty <laughs> points everywhere. Yeah. My goodness. <laughs> yeah. And then, right, cool. and then that's it. That's, that's the whole cycle. Okay. So, so we've had the hand, we've had the crown chakra at the top of the head, we've had the hand here. The eyebrow point. Eyebrow yep. points. Yep. Eyebrow. Yep. Side of eye. Side of the eye. Under eye. Under eye. Yes. Under thought, nose. Under nose. Under lip. And then chin. Your chin. Yep. Mm-hmm. The collarbone point. The top of your pectorials. Yep. And then 10 centimeters under your under arm. So the under arm. Th- thank you for sharing that, Faye. So, and then the best thing to do is to stand in front of a mirror and to be able to just tap on those points and actually vent out what your frustrations are. And that will help sort of yeah. move those emotional blockages. Definitely. Okay, Definitely. cool. I mean, there's plenty of tapping videos online from different practitioners around the world. You can always look them up and follow along, right? Because it will be scripted. But if you're you're in the car and you can't follow a script and you're so hot headed and you're so angry and frustrated in that moment, I would just be tapping. Of course you shouldn't be driving whilst doing this, but I'll just be tapping at any point that you think works for you. Because yes. as long as you're tapping, you're alleviating. Okay, yeah. great. So this, do, you, do you find generally the different parts of the body work for different people? Yes. Yep, different clients, um, different parts will um, sing with them and work with them a lot more. Okay, cool. Or the, um, a bigger release, depending on the point. Okay, cool. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and I'm going to start doing that today. I'll let you know later on how long I've been standing in front of the mirror for tapping my fatty bits. Now, <laughs> that being said, yeah. in your article, you also share additional suggestions how to deepen your self-care rituals further. Now, could you please just go through with them, um, us now, starting with acceptance? Yeah. Okay. So acceptance, I think, is the hardest thing to do, right? Accepting what your circumstances are and what it isn't. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people have a lot of resistance to that. And so even the first premise of EFT and the coaching that I do around that, it's always about accepting what it is and what it isn't and really acknowledging it and allowing all the feelings and emotions to come up around it. Don't suppress it. Even if you don't like it, right? Even if you go, what do you mean I have to accept the fact that, you know, this has happened to me? Well, it, it, it's happening. You, you, you can't resist it. Resistance is futile. You have to really accept it. And mm-hmm. so whilst you're inside the bubble of acceptance as such, a lot of stuff will come up for you. But that's the access to the transformation. Without acceptance, I don't think transformation works. So, and you, and you mentioned, you said, allow the emotions about your past to arise and be released um, from your body. Otherwise, you'll always be a slave mm-hmm. to that particular memory. But I mean, what happens if, yes. if, if you don't even know what the memory and where it started? I mean, I mean, how, how does someone work through something, for example, that they, they, they've got an angst, but they don't know where it anchored and, and, and started from? Yep. Yeah, that's very hard to do by yourself unless you've done a lot of personal development for like two decades. It's really hard for you to really find to dig that, up. The, that particular point, right, to dig that up. But what always happens is something... It's like the iceberg, right? Tip of the iceberg. The surfacing emotion or surfacing circumstance is the trigger, is the yes. immediate trigger. So it's by accepting, like currently where I am, we're, a, we're all in lockdown too, right? So I have to accept that this is what's happening. And if they decide to bring stage four in, I have to accept stage four, right? And not be resistant towards it or be a protest about it. Mm-hmm. And, and I might, I may not agree with it, but I have to accept it. Okay. And that's the point. So you work with the elite, with the presenting sim- symptom that you can't be with. Okay. So acceptance yeah. is the key just to, to accept the, the scenario as it is that we can't change it at the moment. Is that right? That's the starting point. Yeah. Or what it is and what it isn't. It's like you want to be with that person and you can't. So just so accept it is that what you it can't. is and it is and what it isn't. Yep. So right. the next one is acknowledgement. Let's move on to that one then. Yeah. So it's recognizing that you've got, oh, so I wrote the recognition of how things occur to you is a responsibility. Yeah. So it's really acknowledging, 
I mean, there's the circumstance you have to accept, but then then the next part is acknowledging how it occurs for you, mm -hmm. right? Because it's almost like the perspective of a piece of paper, right? That's got a number written six on it. From one end, a person sees six. The other end, the other person sees nine. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Of course. And so it's about really acknowledging what, how things occur for you, mm -hmm. including your perspective, um, including how it impacts another person. And sometimes we don't want to look at that um, and how it impacts people around you, how it impacts yourself and your environment It's really to acknowledge all of that. And what's, and what's the pink elephant that's there that you don't want to say. Yes. Right. So because as the moment you recognize the pink elephant, it alleviates. And this, this can be sort of quite, quite challenging as well isn't it so this is really digging it up this is digging up all of those emotions and actually sort of going great i've had all of this sort of you know buried under the sand for such a long time and here it is finally in the light of day and you have to acknowledge here it is this is the problem this is the emotion yeah. this is the situation but and i want to i want to fix it but to, to complete the cycle yeah. and close this can be really uh, empowering because it really can restore you back to your true self as opposed to sort of just being Very a victim good. Yeah, being a victim of what has happened to you and let and letting that scenario create um, your your persona of who who you are and who, who you represent. This gives you the ability yeah. to restore back to your true self. Is that right? Yeah, very good. Yeah, put it really correctly. And the oh, thing is, because you don't star. acknowledge it, the cycle <laughs> the cycle is Yeah, right? and it just repeats itself because the resistance you're trying to. Um, not recognize it and actually suppress it, then it's all, all does manifest again. Yes. And you're going to get that right. same, as we said earlier, the same scenario, the same person, the same situation, the same job, the same boss, same partner, yada, yada. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Great. Mm -hmm. So yes. by, by accepting the scenario, acknowledging, digging it up, you no longer feel that you will be a victim to your circumstances once you sort of, you deal with it. Is that right? Yeah. Correct. You restore the power back to yourself. So you have it, it doesn't have you. Very nice. Nice. So the third point you've got is affirm. Can you talk us through that one then, please? Yeah. It's almost like, you know, when you're clearing the weeds out from the garden and then you've got a clearing, right? Because if you don't put something there, guess what? Weeds are going to grow back. Oh, yes. Right? And so it's really about you attend to the acceptance and the acknowledgement you you unplug it as such, right? You take the weeds out and then you go, well, what, what do I want to happen instead? What am I going to give myself permission to feel and allow myself to be? So this is the and new so reality this is where that you have. comes in. Yes. Yeah. You're, it's about, it's about um, your word in the matter. It's about you creating something, mm -hmm. right? But if you're trying to create something on top of not having dealt with the acceptance and the acknowledgement, it's not going to work because... No. That's a recipe for disaster. It's like, it's like trying to plant, yeah, it's like trying to plant something on top of a bed of weeds. This won't work. Mm -hmm. um, and so in the, in the affirmation portion, it's like really giving yourself the freedom to play and discover what it is you like to create, right? So, you know, the relationship you have with your children, it's like, okay, if I'm not frustrated and angry, and I can put that aside and understand the impact that I've got on my children and my husband at home and the, and the, te you know, the teaching community. I can put that aside, acknowledge it. What is it that I want to create? What sort of relationship would actually inspire me and have me be vibrantly alive about that? Mm -hmm. And so you might go, well, I actually want joy and fun because everything's been so serious, right? And so you go, all right, I'm just going to create some joy and fun about this. And what would joy and fun look like in the space of the child not wanting to do schoolwork or in the space of there's so much clothes around the laundry hamper and not in the laundry hamper, mm -hmm. right? So what does fun and joy look like in that moment? Because you've got a choice. In that moment, you can be angry again or have joy and fun. Yes. 
So, so this is right. effectively how we're going to create this new reality for ourselves. So we've basically started by saying, okay, well, we've accepted that there's a problem with, with the washing basket and the clothes, clothing being outside. Um, we've acknowledged it. And now we want to be able to create a new reality moving forward. So it's almost like, like I was saying before about the canvas and, and the, um, the paintbrush. You don't want to go and read paint the same picture again and having the same problem and the same no. issue. you've done part of the work but now you need to cement what is the next stage and what does this new reality look like if this is to do with anything to do with right. covid and or anything that we've been sort of dealing with other issues throughout our lives once you've dug it up you've yeah. dealt with it what is this new reality that we're moving forward into that we are going to sort of yeah. continue to move forward and not and be be free of all of this ucky stuff in the past is that right yeah yeah, and really to start creating that inaction in reality. Yes. Because your brain patterns for anger or frustration will be probably a lot more stronger than your new brain patterns for fun and joy, let's mm -hmm. say. Right? And so you really need to be able to practice this and practice this. But then if you've done the work to create the awareness, you'll be aware that there's a choice in the moment. Mm -hmm. And so you'll be able to cement and create stronger it's like you know going to the gym you know it, it's if you're trying to get to the gym newly um it's good to do it a couple times a week or yoga a couple times a week so that you start to build that muscle such Absolutely. that you know you don't need to go back to the old way so it's about building that muscle and building okay. that particular neuro pathway to create more fun and joy in okay. the face of something that gets you angry Okay, great. So let's say there's a scenario where a family is frustrated. Um, if um, Husband's working from home. He's got a, a high pressure, stressful job. He's got two kids um, that have been homeschooled by the mum, And it's just a bit of a, a powder keg about to go off and everyone's just got stuff going on. So let's say that there's a, there's a case scenario within that situation. Start with one problem and sort of work through EFT tapping, going through everything that we've spoken about, talking about acknowledging, accepting, and then affirming, um, and then building up that muscle. So great. So this worked for this particular problem. Let's address the next one. Is that what you're saying? Start with yeah. one problem, go through the process, clear it out, and then go, great. Okay. That's worked. Let, let's reapply. And we've got another thing that we can sort of work through as a family during isolation, during this COVID pandemic, that's been frustrating and that's going to help free us and, and make us just, you know, happier and freer. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. And often you'll find that if you work on one area of your life, it impacts other areas of your life. Because nice. it's you. You turn up, right? If, you're, if you turn up a lot less stressed and a lot more relaxed fun, and joyous around your children, it's going to impact your husband. Of course. It's going to impact the space. It's going to impact how you are if you happen to, um, you know, be at the supermarket and and someone's really close to you and not keeping the 1.5 meter distance. So you can have those oranges, right? Just wait. I'm going to step back. You could, <laughs> or you, yeah. <laughs> or, but, you know, because if your anxiety is so high, then the way you are with your children will impact the way you are with your husband, the environment, and the way you are with someone at the supermarket. So it, it can right. work both positive and, and negative. So, but you'll see, see you spir spiraling out of the rabbit hole as opposed to going further down into the rabbit hole. Is what you're saying. Correct. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Mm. This is awesome. All right. Well, look, we've covered a lot. We've covered what EFT is we've, and we've covered a few things, um, how to sort of to work through um, some of these emotions. If you were to summarize your key messages for anyone watching and listening, Faye, what would they be? It's really to um, start with some self-compassion first because everybody's in the same boat. And so how you are with yourself is first and foremost. And, um, and making sure that you allow yourself the room and the courage to deal with that so that you don't need to carry this forward anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's a great time to, to do it because everything is so heightened and in our faces right now. Yeah. Yes. Great advice. Um, and if anyone's got any other questions for you, Faye, whereabouts can they find you? They can find me on Facebook. My Facebook page is Living Well with Faye, mm -hmm. and um, and that's my most active platform. Mm -hmm. I'm on Instagram as well, so you can look at me, look for me there. But um, yeah, find me on Facebook. 
Wonderful, Faye. I've been really grateful for your time um, and thank you for all this wonderful advice. And I'm off to go and tap my fatty bits now in front of the mirror. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> you take care. <laughs> and I'm going to invent all my fatty bits in front of the mirror. You take mm -hmm. care and um, speak to you yeah. soon. <laughs> Thanks, Faye. Right, bye. Thanks, Rach. Bye. <laughs>